Hi, it's that time of the week again that I bring you another proverb from a woman's perspective. Let's get right into it. Proverbs 4.23 And above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. I don't know about you, but I love watching a good chick flick, in particular an entertaining romantic comedy. Ask anyone in my family and they will be able to tell you how much I enjoy a corny, heartwarming and generally totally unrealistic happy ever after romance movie. They will also tell you what a cranky pants I become and how on edge I am when the outcome isn't as I think it should be with all the loose ends being tied up perfectly, giving me closure and satisfaction. I'm actually getting excited about all the daggy Hallmark Christmas movies that are starting to appear on the movie streaming services we have. Nothing beats Christmas preparation making, uh, made up of wrapping up presents and watching Christmas romance movies back to back takes me to my happy place. In almost all these movies though, there is always a consistent theme. Listen to your heart. And if you follow your heart, then love conquers all. Even when they've only just met each other, they always have to overcome insurmountable obs. Someone is always plotting against them and they have a deadline that is met at the very last minute, just like real life. Not. Obviously, we all know the importance of our heart and how important it is to our physically, physical well-being. The strong and muscular organ, which is about the size of a fist, pumps blood right throughout the body. The regular beating of our heart keeps our blood oxygenated and our bodies breathing and therefore alive. When our heart is not working as it should, patients struggle with breathness, breathlessness and fatigue, among other things. Fortunately, these days we have medical assistance available through medication, pacemakers, surgical interventions, or even heart transplants. I'm sure doctors would also tell us to listen to our hearts, but certainly not in the same way as a rom-com does. Solomon too talks about the heart a lot. He mentions a happy heart, a discerning heart, trust the Lord with all your heart, a cheerful heart, a sick heart, just to mention a few. But never does he say, listen to your heart. He tells us, above all else, guard your heart. So what does he mean by that? Is he saying, don't fall in love so you can't get hurt? No, this is not an unrealistic rom-com movie. It's wisdom for real life. When the Bible talks about the heart, it doesn't mean the physical heart organ. It's referring to our spiritual heart organ, the core of who we are as a person, our inmost selves. It dictates our behavior and it's where we choose good from evil. And it's where our emotions and desires begin. As the physical heart drives the blood, the spiritual heart drives our behavior. When someone becomes a Christian, we symbolically say, Jesus is now living in their heart. Or we used to say that. Maybe I'm getting old. I haven't heard that expression for a while. But to get a better understanding of the passage, it's helpful to feel the whole context. The chapter is written like a letter of instruction to Solomon's sons, but it is really advice for everyone, male and female. He begins, listen, my sons, to a father's instruction. Pay attention and gain understanding. I give you sound learning, so do not forsake my teaching. The way it is written, there is almost a sense of urgency. He is demanding the reader's full attention and comprehension. In the following verses, he talks about how his father, King David, taught him about wisdom, the importance of getting wisdom, holding on to wisdom, loving wisdom, get more wisdom, cherish wisdom, and wisdom will exalt and honor you. He then urges, hold on to instruction. Do not let it go. Guard it well, for it is your life. The next verses, which I'll paraphrase, he warns strongly not to set foot on the path of the wicked or walk in the way of evildoers. Avoid it. 
turn from it. Evil people make others stumble. The path of righteousness is bright, but the way of the wicked is deep, is like deep darkness. Then a bit further down, we come to our verse. Above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. Again, you can sense his desperation to get this important message across. He says, above all else, he is desperate for our hearts to be guarded, guarded against evildoers, wicked people, those that try to drag us down into the darkness and make us stumble. Again, this is above all else, the most important structure instruction from the whole chapter. And how do we guard our hearts? Solomon gives the answers in the following verses by guarding our actions. Let's break it down and again I'm paraphrasing. Verse 24, don't speak perversely or corruptly. Guard your speech. Don't speak in deliberate or unacceptable manner. Don't enter into dishonest, dis in dishonest discussions. And I would add to that, don't enter into gossip or use foul language. Verse 25, look straight ahead. Fix your gaze in front of you. Guard your eyes. Don't be distracted by things you shouldn't be looking at. Don't read, look at or watch inappropriate things. Despite how bombarded we are with indecent material these days. Think carefully about the way you are going and do it resolutely. Guard your mind. Carefully and thoughtfully make good, godly decisions and choices and stick with them with determination. And lastly, verse 27, don't turn to the left or the right. Keep your foot from evil. Guard your feet. Don't let them go in the direction of evil. Don't wander off the path to the left or to the right. Don't go anywhere near people and or things that will lead you off track. What you put into your heart is what flows out of you, both physically, but above all else, most importantly, spiritually. Both scenarios can lead to life and death. No wonder Solomon was so passionate in his instruction. Jesus says in Luke, a good man brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart, and an evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in his heart. For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. Our proverb finishes, for everything you do flows from the heart. Therefore, if we want our hearts to flow to capacity, then we must guard our words, guard our eyes, guard our minds, guard our paths and guard our feet. Then we will have a guarded heart so everything we do reflects God flowing from us. That's one healthy heart. Thanks for listening. Keep that heart safe and have a fabulous week.